video in my tutorial series and the first thing I would like to do is to start off with giving a little bit of credit for this guy here. My uh, frog was not an original piece and I picked this model up on a tutorial series so I'm going to give credit to that tutorial series here and I did build the frog through the tutorial I didn't just use his download version and the course is called 3D design it's box modeling frog and the author is Neil Hersig and the web address is N Hersig at Tufts Education or EDU and I'll zoom into that a bit so that's more visible on this screen. Whoa. Or try to. Um, this was a really good tutorial. There's three PDFs that are downloadable and then the final two courses in the in the tutorial are video tutorials and they're downloadable also or you can just do them on the website which I did. And it was a really great tutorial. I managed to get my frog built in the first try. Very easy and very clear and concise a very nicely done tutorial so that's where my frog actually came from okay so I'm gonna to go to my water settings and most of the blend file I'm gonna ignore because it's mostly a mess so we're gonna just deal with fluid type things here for my fluid settings I use the resolution of 100 a real world size of 10. I increase the gravity slightly to 11 and I use a surface subdivision of 2 and change the boundary type for my domain to free so if any of the water happened to hit it it wouldn't stick to it it would just drop freely and the only other really notable thing on my basic fluid setup was I did time lapse the fluid. There were 60 seconds of video and I time lapsed it to a 45 second simulation. So there was a 25% time lapse on that. My actual fluid objects are tucked away on a different layer and I built them quite close to the model of the pool. as you can see I put them all very close together and tried to minimize any uh, splashing around initially with the bake and then I also had these four inflow objects which sat more or less right inside of the frogs to animate the inflow objects and have it activate when I wanted them to I used the IPO editor <clears throat> and at first I tried to enter some of the settings into here and just use the active portion of the editor and that didn't work out so I had to put all of my values for X, Y, and Z into here and I just used values of 4.5 in all of these settings and and use negative settings where they were called for so that the fluids would all shoot into the proper location and that was just the difference between positive and negative values and then for active I used a curve in here and I only set one curve up where the curve is below zero it is inactive and where it's above zero it's active and it's really that easy so you can see here that my fluid became active at frame 300 which is listed down here and right where it comes above zero is where it becomes active and then it became inactive around 1300 or something like that 
Um, once I'd established the curve for one object, I simply copied it using this dialog here and pasted it onto the other objects so that they would all activate at the same time. And other than that, it was really just moving my camera around and having a couple of things move in between layers and I did that all with by moving them and using the I key to insert key frames. Um, I'm pretty much out of things on this file. Oh, I guess I could mention that tucked away in this portion of my pool and I'll go into a solid mode so you can see that right here this gray object is an outflow object and it probably didn't go unnoticed that that object caused a bad interaction here with the water and it didn't look all that great in that area and I probably could have worked on that a little bit more I'd actually tried to extrude the pool this edge to come down and hide that and with the extrusion caused the water to view this whole surface as being a face and split my water in two so that didn't work out and I really didn't want to have to build so much of the model over again over a small wave and I actually struggled to get this portion to work so that was something that could have used a little bit of working on still and a little bit more trial and error on that area for myself though, um, I'm not going to try to perfect this fluid animation any further. Uh, I'm going to move on and think I'm going to try my hand with some character animation now. And who knows, maybe I'll come back with, uh, with another newbie tutorial on some character animation or something to that nature. So I hope somebody got something useful out of this little series of tutorials and... Happy modeling, guys.